Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is January the 22nd, 2019, and what a great day today. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Hope you had a nice Martin Luther King day off, and uh, hope you were able to join us last yesterday on the live feed. If not, this is why we do market reports, to give you guys an update what went on today. And, of course, to help you plan for tomorrow. So I'm going to talk about today BCCI, which is an OTC ticker. I'm going to talk about ALT, TGEN, AMTD, and Codex. And then I want to actually comment at the end, actually, on uh, what's going on in the marijuana sector. Uh, some good news I was reading in um, Bloomberg report just a few minutes ago. So... Without further ado, we're going to talk about BCCI. Now, I got to tell you guys, I never heard of this ticker at all. And uh, Patrick, who uh, is known as Kiko, who helps uh, our night school uh, group learn about stocks and learn how to read charts and learn how to look at fundamentals, really, not so much on the charts, but really more on the fundamentals, because chart guys is a uh, washboard here. But uh, BCCI is called Barista's Coffee. And for those of you that are like Super Bowl fans, um, I do want to mention about Barista's Coffee. So um, this company here, they had a PR that was released and they were featured at Forbes.com and they were highlighted that they will be on Super Bowl ads for its Enricha Roast CBD best-selling white coffee. I mean, I can't even believe this, that they have enriched cannabis coffee ads at the stadium and this is the first time that cannabis ads are shown at the super bowl and the special set of ads will run throughout the day around in and around the stadium before during and after the game promoting this national brand barista coffee company cbd and um i just want to say that the article that was listed here describes the connection to maroon five um by being provided by baristas allowing fans to message the band so you guys know maroon five you know i love uh, adam levine there great singer and so if you guys go to the website it's called baristas.tv and i think jim's showing that to you guys right now and yep. uh i gotta say like i'm even interested to try this because they actually have uh espresso now and i wouldn't mind trying the cannabis infused espresso I mean, I don't even know how much it costs. Twenty four ninety five. How 20, much? Twenty four ninety five a bag. For one bag. Well, you know what? I might even want to order some and try. I don't even know if they'll ship it here to Canada. But anyways, I want to get back to uh, what the action was here on this chart. So this was alerted to us today by Patrick. Uh, he mentioned the stock this morning at zero one five. And um, that was kind of just shy of the low of the day. I mean, the low of the day was 013. Uh, but, you know, he wanted, I think, some confirmation before sharing the idea. And my goodness, this ran all the way to 031. This is like 100% plus trade. So congratulations. Many people in the room banking. And uh, hopefully, if you can't trade OTC, that's okay. Um, you can still learn how to how to trade and how to watch a good setup. And this was a good setup. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim to talk about this because I think we might see some continuation on this based on how strong it closed and based on the fact with the hype with the Super Bowl. Yep. You know, uh, 
I'm going to order some of this right after we get off here. I want to get me a bag of it just to test it Good out. Good idea. You guys know Jim's a coffee buff. Oh, yeah. I love my coffee, and I'm, I'm a real connoisseur about what I drink. I like to drink Blue Mountain. Uh, Jamaica coffee is one of my favorites. And so I mean, I've spent up to $50 a, a pound on that stuff. So uh, as she said, Kiko is one of our best OTC traders in the room. And I had so much going on today, I kind of just didn't think about how good the news was on this. Anytime you hear something that's um, going to be promoted at the Super Bowl for their very first commercial is a big deal, a very huge deal. So about four or five months ago when the farm bill came out, this thing popped up to about two cents. Or, yeah, right about around two cents. So I'm going to put that little trend line right there at two. And then I'm going to put another one right here as I'm as I'm seeing some consolidation. I'm going to get in this tomorrow on a pullback. If I can get in on a pullback, I think just, just I'm, I might be asking too much to try to get in two cents, but I'm going to see if I can get in here right around two, four, maybe two, three, six for a pullback. Cause I'm pretty sure it might pull back a little bit. I'm just going to be patient and wait for it, but this is a year's chart and I'm going to pull up the daily. You see, it's had some pretty good solid support right here. at one, four. And that's about when we called it out in the room. So I'm going to pull up the date. First, I'll pull up the 20 day. And you can see the breakout we had, which started out yesterday. We hit that little resistance right here, which is right around 1, 2. And then today it opened up on a breakout. And if I'd have seen that, I would have been in it down here about 1, 3, 8. If I'd have known about this yesterday. But today it ran up. It took a little time, but it didn't sink back. Then we did have a little pullback here to about 1.9, and when that happened, boom, she went up to 3.08. This is, I'm going to bring this up just to a daily one minute, show you how the moving averages are reacting. We had the, the 200, the 100, and the 50. And you see it snuggled down here in between the 50 and the 100, and had a breakout, hit that 2.4, and then bounced on up, closed up here right around 3 cents. So I'm really liking this idea. I think I'm, I'll get into it and sell it before the Super Bowl or maybe sooner, maybe scalp it. It'll be a good scalper play for me. And that's going to be BCCI, and it's, I'm a coffee fanatic. I mean, I'm, that's, there's three things that I like. It's a good bed, a good pair of shoes, and a good cup of coffee, and that comes in exactly that order. Maybe the coffee comes, the bed, the coffee, and then the shoes. So... This is BCCI, and the next one we're going to talk about, and I'm very bullish on this, so I'm going to try to play on the pullback. I'm excited about it. And then the next one we're going to talk about is ALT. Okay, so ALT is uh, short for ALT immune, and you guys know we've talked about ALT in the past. I mean, this is a immunotherapeutics company. They focus on uh, immune responses for the prevention and treatment of different diseases, and I just want to mention, so Alt, uh, you know, we talked about this last week in our chat. Um, and one of the things we talked about is that this could be a short squeeze in the making here on the stock. And, uh, you know, the, the stock did close above the 50-day moving average for the first time since 2018, the month of September. And um, we did see actually the shorts getting squeezed. And I also want to mention that there was um, insider buys on, uh, I think it was, is it Alt that had insider buys? I think so. I'll have to check, but um, Alt had a nice move today. And it, I thought it was going to actually break the um, high of day of 345, but it didn't. But uh, still, I think this is one to still keep watching, uh, you know, as a result of the action that happened today. I mean, it traded uh, 2.69 million. So we'll see. I mean, after hours, it's still ling lingering around 333-ish. And we'll see what happens tomorrow. But I think this should still be on watch. Oh, yeah. You know, one thing about this thing, it's way oversold. It's Definitely. Way oversold, way oversold. Big time. And today, I'm just loving, loving this chart. And here's your yearly chart. Saying it, and I don't know if this had splits or I'll probably have to go back a ways. But, man, look at. On the yearly chart, it's up here at $58, and it's pulled back. We had a nice little bounce right here about, oh, back in uh, September, 
had about a three day bounce and it pulled back, sold off, and then we hit a, a yearly low at 170. I'm looking at the moving averages. We run into the 50 today. That was below, that was around 250. That was below three bucks. This thing can run up to five bucks if it, if it wants to. As I'm drawing up this chart, I'm gonna put a little trend line right here. And then I'm gonna to try to find a couple of spots where I can just go ahead and throw some trend lines. This is kind of how I chart up a stock. So you're kind of gonna get you a little lesson there. I'm gonna bring it down to the 20 day. I'm gonna look at the 20 day and I'm gonna say, wow, this thing's been on a run from 170 for about 20 days. And today we hit a 20 day high, which was right around 340. We hit that about last week, right around Tuesday. And she dipped on down, found support. And then today we had that big bounce. And I think it, it come out with a patent news today is what brought this thing up. If, yeah, it had a patent. Uh, granted US patent number blah 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 called rapid and prolonged immunologic therapeutic. So it ran up here to right about 329, had a double top. The double top failed, pulled back, had a support level right around 282. And I'm seeing drawing these trend lines as I go for support levels. And I'm going to just take me a few minutes here. You can see how I get this done. I wanted to get in this thing right around 318 today. And I'll pull up the daily here in a second. And I'm just trying to find some resistance lines. And now I'm going to pull up the daily. I've done this for 15 years. So, you know, I kind of get in the hang of it. And this is where I want it in right here. This 318 for my second entry. And I just I was too chicken to pull the trigger. And right when I was getting ready to pull the trigger, look what happened. It was right here. It ran into that 50 S to that 100 SMA. And I was telling Vegas, I'm thinking about getting into this. Then all of a sudden, before I pushed my finger on the trigger to buy it, it ran up to 130. <laughs> I just wanted to cry. I really did because I thought it was just a beautiful idea to get in that once it hit that. Because it kind of hovered around here and then it went above that 100. And these three moving averages are very important to me on a breakout stock, especially if I want to be a patient trader. And those are the SMAs. And I'm talking about the 200, the 100, and the 50. And a lot of times these stocks will run up, spread wide, and that means the gap, that means it's still going to go up. Once it started closing into the 100, it kind of consolidated, but we had us in the sending uh, flag right here as you can see and we had to break a certain top and that top was right around 340 341 and I was mentioning that in the room I said we got to break this 341 and then it went ahead and went up to 347 so and then we pulled back after hours somebody could have had him a good entry at 325 you see how it touched this 200 SMA got a little oversold and it bounced up and it's kind of created a few dots up here and we were at 331 so I'm going to keep a real good eye on this tomorrow, and I'm going to draw a couple more resistance lines now that we come to the daily. And one of them is going to be right here around 338. Another one's going to be right around 334. And then we're going to have to break a resistance. And I'm going to, I'm going to say solid resistance is going to be right around 341. That's what we got to break tomorrow. So I'm going to keep this thing on real good watch. I like what happened today with the chart. This could have been one that I could have scalped all day long. I called this support level right around 318 to 320. And you can see what I'm talking about. I run it up here, pulled back. I could have had me a scalp there to about 330. Pulled back to 320. Run up to 334. It's another 13 cents. Back to 320. Then we went to that 341, which I would have probably got out right in here around 340. Pulled back to that 100 again. Bounced up. This thing was very, very bullish today. The bulls were on it, that's for sure. And the next one we're going to talk about, and this one I think is a real, I got turned on to it today. I oh. Know, I don't know if we've talked about this one before or not, but that's TGEM. I never talked about this. Yeah. It's called TGEN, yep. Techo Gen. And uh, let me tell you guys a little bit about this because you guys, you know, we talk a lot about marijuana stocks. Well, this company is in Massachusetts, in Waltham, Massachusetts, and they're a clean energy company. They provide clean natural gas-powered on-site power, 
and they provide heating and cooling equipment. And, you know, I got to say, you know, one of the things that they're doing in the marijuana sector is they're providing cooling capacity. So they are selling what they call indoor cannabis products, not the product, but the, the equipment. And it's basically a natural gas engine that turns the refrigeration compressor to meet the cooling requirements of the growing facilities. And I have to say, when I was researching the stuff, the actual company, uh, you know, they had, uh, you know, news also that um, they've recently, you know, sold some of these uh, ma ma machines, uh, or if, is that, if that's what you want to call them, these chillers. Two -ton, these are big two ton chillers. Um, and uh, they're doing quite well. So, um, their revenue's been great. Their sales in 2018 increased 66% over 2017. And that was with more than half of that delivered capacity for indoor marijuana cultivation. And I think this is going to be a company to watch because as these marijuana companies, um, I guess, buy more land and need to have these growing facilities because of supply and demand is so big, they're going to need an energy efficient company like this to sell them the equipment. And I'm sure they already have a reputation for um, helping these marijuana companies uh, with the equipment. And this also saves the company money uh, by having this equipment because it's an energy saver as well. So I think this is really interesting. I have to say, I also even fell in love with the actual chart um the volume is what actually intrigued me the most first of all i saw a cup and handle on the chart today and uh i also saw a major volume search because i actually went during the day when the stock was popping i said let me go look at the previous historical volume and you guys know when i look at historical volume i go on yahoo finance and i like to look at you know what's the historical data on the stock and when i saw the volume i actually looked that the volume has been very 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 low very uncrowded and you know what that's the kind of setup i like okay because similar to other stocks like staff that ran today um based on some news in the morning this is kind of like one of those stocks that i like where it's not really popular no one's really buying it and i like it because i'm looking for a good setup with a slow accumulation or very uncrowded and eventually you know if there's more news down the road with this company uh, i think they'll do very well but i like the chart very much uh, it's an active swing trade and, uh, it did cross over the 50 day today as well. And uh, I saw the solid buy here. So turn it over to Jim now to talk about the chart and what he likes. It's funny how things happen. And she just mentioned staff. We alerted staff back on the sixth and we've had a couple bounces with it today. And then we had that big breakout on staff. So good job on that one, Vegas. Also, the way I think about Tijin is a lot of people are whining and, and crying about how much electricity is being used for, for growing cannabis. And her and I are very aware that there's a big shortage of, of stock of cannabis to meet the demand. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But uh, T-Gen, these generators are going to be green generators. So that's going to be a plus in, in the cannabis department. And I'm, I'm really excited about I think there's going to be a lot more grow rooms going to be, have to be grown, built. We hear about them daily, on a daily basis, almost, or weekly basis. We find out another one has signed another contract to allow someone else to grow, you know, acres. or So, this, to me, Tijin is, and I work for a guy that builds generators, and I might bring this up to him, too, because he's a local uh dealer here but Tijin here's the yearly chart another thing that I liked about this chart is that Vegas asked me to look at the chart so the first thing thing I do is look at the yearly chart and I noticed that the yearly high was at 420 so I said Vegas this is going to be a good play today because it's you know we're going to beat we're going to get up here to that 420 area and had a yearly high at 420 so that's just like like a clue that the gods upstairs was talking to us so this thing pulled back I mean it pulled back to a support level right around three under three bucks here about four months ago. You see how it's had a real nice run, and the volume was real good back in this time of the year. And then when the farm bill came out, it started hopping up again. It started bouncing up again. And then today with that news that come out, um, somebody buying one of these cooler, cooler chiller systems for one of their grow rooms, and they're not small. They're huge. 
it's a big operation and they'll probably make smaller ones to boot but who knows but so today I'm gonna pull up the 20-day chart on it but you see this is a beautiful chart if you were watching now now that I'm know about it I'm gonna keep this on top of my in, inside of my pot watch list and I have a few of them that I really keep on top of because you know I've been alert in this this sector for a long time probably when the stocks first came out 14 years ago somewhere back there 10 years ago so it was about 10 years ago and these things bounced up to resistance level up here right around four bucks and then today we had another I mean then we had another bounce up to four bucks and then today we almost hit that benchmark again four dollars so I'm gonna pull up the 20 day real fast we're just gonna have a little glance you can see the volume was kind of you know not that hot until today you can see the volume right here this volume bar so this news made it made it made it break out a little bit so this is going to be a stock that I'm going to look at as maybe a, a small correction small pullback plays and, and and it did pull back we had that 397 up here and we pulled back to the 50 SMA on a daily one minute chart so this is Tijin I've got a couple support lines in here I'm going to add another one right about here and I'm just trying to find where I can see some good consolidation period right around 389 so I'm gonna keep this thing on watch I'm gonna be watching it tomorrow when I come in and then if I can get I want to get in at a cheaper price and see if I can scalp it but I'll be scalping it for a long time here on out and that is gonna be Tgen and then we got oh Vegas do you remember the options call you made yeah, so you know what, guys? So um, you guys know I really, Jim and I really want to help people with smaller accounts. So, you know, uh, TD Ameritrade, which is the ticker is AMTD, uh, you know, they were having their earnings day after hours. So I thought, well, since the earnings are going to be going up today, I mean, not up, but since the earnings are after hours, I said, you know, why don't we look at some options and maybe see if we can find something that's not expensive that would obviously expire this week, Friday, because it is a short week. But also, um, again, I try to keep in mind the fact that the option cost is not a lot, but that there's good opportunity for a trade. Um, and I have to say, we did call an options trade idea, which was an earnings play. It was an options call for the uh, strike of a hundred and sorry, the strike of fifty seven dollars. And those option calls were going, you know, depending where you picked it up, anywhere from 20 to 30 cents, one contract. So you might've been, it might've cost you $20, $22. I don't know. People bought them at wherever they were comfortable and the most they would have spent, let's say it was $30. And if they were lucky and got it for $20, um, then that's great. And good news though, is that the Ameritrade earnings climbed 25%. Uh, on revenue growth of 17% to $1.47 billion, according to Zach's research, and earnings per share of $1.11 on revenue of $1.52 billion. Uh, their net client assets grew 10% to $32 billion. I mean, you want to talk about a company that's making money? This is it, TD Ameritrade. I mean, look at all the traders that even use the, the platform. I mean, Jim's a customer, and he's constantly trading, and they're making money, obviously, off everybody that with commissions so um i think we'll see some action on the stock but to jim's point um you know the company also has to the stock has to break the 200 day here and they also announced earlier a pr that i saw on td ameritrade that they have a strategic investment in a company called iris x which is a uh, regulated uh, derivatives exchange that helps with uh, digital assets and spots contracts on one platform. So it's a platform that has, um, they do like cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. So they have a, a, they were dealing with them back in October. And it looks like they've put more money into that company called Iris X. So good news on a, let's say strategic investment, but also on the earnings side. So that's good for them. And Jim, I'd like to hear what you think about the chart. Oh, I love the chart. I definitely love the chart. We had a bottom down here when I was calling the crystal ball out right around 45 bucks. And I'm telling everybody, you know, time to start looking real strongly off that long sell-off we had from the 100 
went well below the 50 and then it just dipped down to 4570 so if anybody had their wits on this stock they made him a killer killer deal almost nine ten almost a nine dollar and fifty cent trade right there from 46 up to 54.92 so 45 i mean to 54.92 so you know beautiful now i think we're like i was telling vegas we need to break this 200 sma if it's going to happen that or we're going to pull back a little bit and if the pullback happens i'm looking around 54.39 somewhere in that area maybe a lower support right around oh right around 53 at the most and then you got one more right here so we've had about a four day breakout people are i guess getting ready buying their options getting ready for the earnings to come out so i'm going to pull up the 20 day and just have a glance at it draw another trend line or two in here and i've had this platform for over 15 years so I, I can't live without it. I had Scott trade two, and then they merged. Then everybody knows how that happened. The website kind of messed up a little bit for a couple of months before they finally ironed it out. And that was a mirror trade. So, you know, it's not been a pleasant ride, but it hit, did get fixed, and it looks pretty good. So we did break up to her 57. I hope she got out of it and took her profits. And... uh I just have nothing really else to say about it. I'm going to look, pull up this one more year chart and see if we can find another resistance if it wants to move up a little bit. So the next resistance is going to be right around 56.48. I got another one right here right around um, almost 56, 56, 55.90. And we're, we're at a, we're in a channel of the pivot point right here. This used to be a support right around 53.47 right around in there so I'm gonna keep this on watch and start watching this stock starting tomorrow I haven't really paid much attention to Ameritrade stock because you know I've been playing a lot of less less valued stocks but now that Vegas has got into options I'll be backing her up because that I just opened up a tasty works account today and I'm gonna learn how to use that platform and that's gonna be my options platform so um, well I can't wait to so, actually finally get Jim in there because yep. I keep telling him he's so good with charts that he'd be so great at, you know, help getting benefiting from option trades too. So I think it's just going to be like I said, we're always evolving and learning um, how to trade different things. And you got to learn different instruments, how to trade, because sometimes when the stocks aren't good, options are good. When options are slow, stocks are running. So, I mean, even option traders, I know when the stocks are, you know, options not that great or there's not a lot of action, they either don't trade at all or they look for swing trades on the stock, you know, on the NASDAQ, NYSE. So really just, you gotta be versatile and, and learn. And I'm an expert whatsoever, but yeah. certainly um, we work together to read charts properly. And I really look at the IV and things like that on options and we try to find good setups. And, and another thing is it's kind of like a drug addiction. If you want to quit, you know, you got to you got to do it yourself. You got to put it in your own mind. And Vegas tried for a year to get me to trade options, and I just said, I just can't. I just not. I just don't want to do it. I'm just not ready. I'm just not ready. And I finally told her a couple of weeks ago, before the the end of the new year, that I want to learn how to do it in 2019. I'm finally thinking I'm ready. So it's it's always a, a philosophy, you know, a mind over matter situation when you're trading stocks. And you got to get yourself in that right position. You got to be in the now, and I think I'm in the now right now to learn how to trade them. Okay, so, and uh, yeah, go ahead. So the next one we're going to talk. Do you have something else you want to say? Want to finish, I just want to finish off that if you guys are uh, TD Ameritrade shareholders, um, that Tim Hockey, as you guys know, Tim is the um, CEO of TD Ameritrade. So if you have a problem with your platform, email him. <laughs> and oh, then um steve like Boyle that. is his, yeah tell him i sent you yeah and he'll then, like uh, that he'll ban CFO, you no he won't and then uh cfo steve Boyle. so the two of them tim and steve uh will be tomorrow morning 8 30 uh taking your questions from the analysts so if you want to listen and tune into the call you're welcome to go to the amtd.com website and you can find your dial-in number for the conference call and uh, that is tomorrow morning at 8.30. And you know what? I might actually listen because I want to hear what's 
what's happening because I'm really interested in what's going to go on with the what the company's up to. So I'm just curious to hear what they have to say. So uh, that's AMTD. And last but not least, Codex, C-O-D-X. Well, for those of you that uh, had some time yesterday, uh, even if you didn't join on the live YouTube that we did yesterday, you know, Jim talked about Codex. And uh, not only did he talk about it, he gave you guys support and resistance. He would have made money today. It went up 20 cents from his uh, commentary yesterday. So you would have been prepared today. And it's really important to sometimes plan a trade. Just like you plan an entry, you plan an exit. Well, Jim gave you both entry and exits. And as uh, guidelines, if that trade was of interest to you. Um, furthermore, we did mention that Codex had a 13G filing which is uh, in, um, uh, someone makes a purchase of the company stock of 5% or more that has to be disclosed. Um, so that was uh, filed as well. And uh, I'm going to let Jim talk about that chart because he was able to trade it today. Yep. Um, like we did a live two-hour broadcast yesterday on YouTube, and we invited everybody out in the trading world to just give us tickers. And her and I just sat back and, she gave the fundamentals and I gave the charts and we're going to do that periodically probably more once we settle settle in a little bit and I call it my crystal ball t hour where and it usually lasts about two hours and everybody knows I have a crystal ball so that's that and there's the website I'm going to pull up the chart and tell you how I talked about it yesterday I said, we're probably, you see, we've had a pretty bad pullback on this. And to me, it was getting a little choppy down here at the bottom to an oversold area. Well, today we made a new yearly low. I didn't expect it to get down to this, this down this low. I was calling a pullback to right around 107. And then maybe we would get to a dollar because that's where the base of them candlesticks are right there. Right around here. And then I added a new support today when we hit that 93 cents. And I was telling the room, you know, jump in it. You, you can get in here at 95. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day and just have you look at it. It's kind of a little gradual channel going down, but it's had bounces. See, it's had pops. And we had a pop Friday evening up here to resistance right around 130. And then today we pulled back. We had three white soldiers or three, three black crows. And it consolidated, and then we had three white soldiers right after it, which is always, after, a lot of times when you see the three black crow, crow, crows, and you get a doji, and I'll show you what a doji looks like. You see that doji right there? Then we had that red candle, and that was the time to start popping in it. And I called this out at 95 cents in the room. And then the last three white soldiers came in, and up after hours, we're at 113 last time I looked. Right now it's saying we're at 112, but that might be the 50 SMA. So I'm going to pull up the daily. This is I did call the pullback on this stock. I did call the pullback to 107, and I said we might get to a dollar. And then to me, with the market reaction, I think people just got fragile and got out of it and cut their losses or whatever they wanted to do. But that sometimes when they do that, and I and I people just uh, I, I constantly say, well. He got out. I might want to get in here, and and just excited how it bounced up. It was a gradual bounce up. We hit one thirty thirteen after hours. We had a golden cross right here, where the fifty day cross over the one hundred and the and the two hundred, and we landed right here at that one oh seven that I called in that um, live setting that we had yesterday. So I'm gonna keep it still on watch. Um, I would have took that 20 cent profit today. There had been no doubt. I would have probably got out at 107 myself because that was my, my support level, which turned into a resistance today. That's how it works. You know, sometimes what would be a resistance or a support at one time could turn into a resistance when something gets oversold. So this is CODX and Vegas. That wasn't our last one. Oh, uh, well, no, that that is the last one. No, um, but remember I do, Cron? I did... Oh, yeah, no, no, I was going to say Cron, but, you know, Cron, Jim, you can talk about Cron if you want, but I did want to mention an article, and then you can, tough, you can talk about Cron being, you know, prime example of the action that's been going on, but there was an article in, uh, you know, Bloomberg tonight, 
uh, that was written. And they basically talked about, you know, the Canadian cannabis supply shortage. And they actually have said in an interview with George Robinson, who is the CEO of Raven Quest Biomed Inc. And he is also uh, a cannabis, believe it or not, consultant. He was a cannabis consultant um, back in the day. He still is involved in the industry. But uh, with the you know legalization that's coming up also for the edible products, they're saying that the demand is going to be crazy and that they're going to need to grow as much as 6 million kilograms of cannabis a year just to meet the domestic demand for the edible products and the dried flour and obviously other extractables that are expected to hit the market later this year. So the comment was, you know, is this the elephant in the room that just no one's talking about? And what are we going to do when we need to start extracting cannabis material? So um, this is quite interesting that to read something like this. Uh, they said that in Canada, Canada more than quadruple uh, to U.S. dollars, uh, $5.9 billion in, in 2022, uh, according to the analytics that they have from one versus 1.2 billion last year. So this is just absolutely incredible. Uh, the demand for the cannabis oil is also going to reach about 1 million to 1.25 million kilos a year when that also becomes legal later this year, which is about 5 million kilos of cannabis that's needed. So this is not over. I mean, you know, these marijuana stickers ripping, pulling back, ripping, pulling back. I mean, they, they have, you know, their channels, but uh, it's certainly no comparison to what people say, oh, this is going to be like a pop and fade, like a Bitcoin. I don't think so. And I think Jim can agree with that. I mean, this is a totally, totally different kind of sector. You can't compare the two. I'm sorry. I don't, I, I mean, that's just my thoughts, um, but there's just so much different things that can be done with the marijuana sector, especially with the medical marijuana, with the pharmaceuticals that I want to start getting their hands in there and take ownership or, um, you know, investing in these uh, marijuana producers. Uh, don't be so shocked. I think we'll see more and more takeovers as things start to evolve. And Jim, what are your thoughts on that and, and how you see this and talk about Cron if you want, we'll wrap it up. And for every hundred grams of cannabis, only 12 to 20, 26 equivalent grams of cannabis oil is produced. So cannabis CBD oil and a lot of stuff coming out, is, it's really going to have to fill the demand. And she's right. You know, there's no comparison with Bitcoin in the cannabis industry because it hits so many different sectors. And we just mentioned one today that was Tijin, the chiller generator, which I think the with this shortfall of demand they're going to have to build it up fast and we've noticed like we've spoke before about how many just i expect a lot more uh, growing facilities out of the deal i really do i'm 100 percent bullish on this and i've debated uh friends of mine and i've debated top wall street executives you know i, I sit here and I argue argue with cnbc when they get into the <laughs> cannabis role you know, I said, you right. guys, quit bashing this sector because you're missing out on something good. And that's when, that, that was when we're up more than 100% on a lot of these. Like Cron, we're up more than 300% on it since, you know, they said, oh, it ain't going to get nowhere and blah, blah, blah. I just think they're trying to protect the pharmaceutical companies. So there's a lot to be, this is just the beginning. This reminds me, it does remind me of the dot-com era. If you want to compare the two. It reminds me of a lot more of the dot-com era and what we went through back during the Clinton years. But, and I think the same thing with, with uh, the cannabis industry. So I just want to mention this again. I keep mentioning this stock. It's my favorite cannabis uh, stock right now is Cron. We had a, a breakout again today. Another breakout. It seems like it does it every day. Friday was beautiful. And then it consolidated, and then we went from Friday's high, which was at close right around 15 bucks, and we ran all the way up another dollar. And it pulled back, and I called it out in the room. I called it out there at 15.19. I said, watch this sucker run again. 
and then we had the triple top and I mentioned this a lot in the room this triple top right in here I said usually when you see a triple top you're going to get a pullback and remember that when you see a triple if if you, you get the first top pulls back to support you get the second top and it fails you might get one more chance at it but then you better start thinking okay it's time for me to go ahead and take profit and I want to make that very clear and I've mentioned this many times in the room I like to read chart patterns so I'm accustomed to a triple tops and usually when a triple top happens and it don't hold go ahead and get out proof of that is the 50 day cross down right here see that's a sign of weakness that's a sign of weakness it run right into the 200 bounced up to the 100 and that would have been a chance if you didn't listen to me the first time you had a second chance to get out of that and that's when it run up and it hit that 100 SMA right there you see what I'm talking about you know what side of the street I'm on I'm on Wall Street so this thing pulled back down again to about 1529 I alerted it the double bottom I said we're gonna have another bounce up to the 100 it went up to that 57 and then she went on down back to my original support level there 1519 ran right back up again and there's just a beautiful little wedge on the way down now this wedge is going to produce another breakout come tomorrow again so we can keep in this range now I've got a target on this for 20 bucks but it's not going to happen today and it won't happen tomorrow but if we can keep in a channel and then finally it'll, it'll finally tighten up and then we'll go ahead and break that resistance there and that resistance that we need to break is going to be right around sixteen dollars so if we need to break this triple top also and I'm gonna go ahead and mark that in I'm gonna go ahead and put it right at 1585 I've been reading charts for 15 years so I know the patterns I know what goes up and what comes down and let me tell you something you take your profit when you get a chance you'll have a second chance to play this stock I've called the pullbacks and I've called the bounces almost precisely all the way down from about six dollars and fifty cents and I called this breakout last time at ten fifteen ten dollars and fifteen cents right here and if you'd have been out listening to me I was telling everybody in the room I said get ready we're gonna have a great 2019 this was right when my crystal ball came out and I said we're gonna take this up to 20 bucks almost double our money and within a three-week period we've run it all the way up to sixteen dollars and we had to break the double top that I mentioned the other day and let me pull this up show you what I'm talking about and then we're gonna be done I'm gonna pull up the 180 see we had a little section right here that's when it had that big breakout on that news right here and this is the section this is the top we had to break and once we broke that we just went ahead and went on up and made new highs so let it consolidate a little bit always play the pullbacks don't rush into this trade do not rush into this trade and you'll be able to get you some money out of it and that's cron and that's the last of the stocks we're going to talk about we talked about alt b c c i t g e n a m t d c o d x and cron Vegas, you want to cl close in arguments? <laughs> I don't want to argue. I didn't think um, so. No, but uh, I also just want to say thanks to everyone for subscribing and following. Appreciate it. And uh, if you pop into our room, that's fine. If you join the room eventually, that's great. If you don't, no worries. Like, I mean, we're just here to share information. And if you like your experience, then of course we want you to be part of it. But only if you like your experience. Uh, the other thing too is there's a website. I just want to. I'm gonna put it in our YouTube video. It's called Hello CBD uh, dot dog, and talk about uh, marijuana oil. This is an oil that's made for dogs, and uh, this is for dogs that have separation anxiety, medical problems, arthritis, joint pain, and I cannot. This is just an incredible product on uh, a CBD oil for dogs. This company has been all over the news. And so, you know, for those of you that have pets, I mean, I have a little dog and uh, I know many people have pets. They should check this out. I'll put the link in our website and you can read all of it and see if it's, if it's for you. 
And, uh, you know, I don't think it's a public company at this point, but I just thought I would share it because, you know, some people have really like pets that are not well, and you may want to just read about this company and read what the product does and obviously check with the veterinarian before you do anything. Uh, but Hey, listen, if we can help our loved ones, like our little pets, you know what, we might as well help our little furry children. I'm a little sucker for little dogs. And uh, that's it for now. So I uh, hope you guys tune in tomorrow. And uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. And thanks, Jim. And I love stocks. Yep, we definitely love stocks. And everybody, please subscribe and ring that bell for our future updates. Also, I post this into my personal channel. And anybody that's following me in there, please go ahead and, and find I Love Stocks YouTube channel and subscribe to it and hit that ring that bell. Let's bring this bring this up some more so this is the aftermarket report with vegas and jim today's date january the 22nd 2019 and we love stocks